How many times have you heard that drinking lots of water is very important for our body and mind? And how many times have you promised yourself to drink more, but you didn't because you were lazy or thought you didn't have the time? You should know that the power of water for our physical and mental well-being is extraordinary, but most of us underestimate it and drink too little. And when we drink, as if that were not enough, we almost never do it in the right way. In this Zen story, we will discover the enormous benefits of proper water intake. And if you stay until the end, you will discover the 10 ways to properly drink it so that our body, mind, and spirit can benefit from its enormous benefits. But before continuing, if you are not one of us yet, Subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to stay updated when we publish new content for your personal growth. The morning sun filtered through the leaves of an ancient cherry tree, casting a dappled light on the serene face of Hiroto, an elderly Zen monk ready to dispense his wisdom to the pilgrims who had come to visit him. Today, Hiroto began in a gentle but firm voice, I will tell you about a secret that few know, the art of drinking water properly. A murmur of surprise ran through the crowd. Drinking water? Could something so simple and everyday really high profound wisdom? Hiroto smiled. Water is the source of life, but like any precious element, it must be treated with respect. 99% of people do not know how to drink water properly and this can lead to imbalances in the body and spirit. The pilgrims listened attentively as Hiroto explained how water, if drunk incorrectly, could contribute to a variety of ailments, from joint pain to chronic fatigue, from dull skin to digestive problems. But the monk continued, looking up at the sky, water, if drunk with awareness, can be a powerful tool for healing and transformation. So he began to share his teachings, interweaving them with stories and anecdotes that captured the imagination of his listeners. The first thing you need to know is that water should be drunk calmly and with presence. Imagine, Hiroto said, that you are an athlete preparing for a race. Every movement is precise. Every breath is conscious. Drink the water with the same attention, savoring each sip as if it were your last. Hiroto told the story of a young disciple who suffered from anxiety and indigestion. The monk advised him to drink the water slowly, concentrating on each sensation, the coolness on the tongue, the gurgling in the throat, the flowing through the body. After a few weeks, the disciple noticed a profound change. Not only had his digestion improved, but he also felt calmer and more centered. Drinking water while being present to oneself, in fact, transforms a mechanical gesture into a moment of meditation. It aids digestion, since saliva, rich in digestive enzymes, mixes with water. It reduces stress, bringing attention to the present moment and distancing it from worries. It increases awareness of one's body and its needs. Water should be drunk lukewarm or at room temperature, Hiroto continued. Ice water, he explained, is like a cold wind that puts out the fire of digestion. Lukewarm water, on the other hand, is like a ray of sunshine that nourishes and warms the body from within. Hiroto recalled an ancient Chinese proverb, drink water like hot soup and your stomach will thank you. He explained that cold water forces the body to expend energy to heat it, while warm water flows harmoniously, aiding all vital processes. Drinking warm water improves digestion stimulates the production of digestive enzymes and promotes the peristaltic movement of the intestine. It also stimulates metabolism, helping the body burn calories more efficiently. And it promotes the elimination of toxins through sweating and diuresis. 
and warm water should be drunk on an empty stomach. In the morning, Hiroto said, your body is like a thirsty garden. Water it with one or two glasses of warm water to purify it and prepare it for the day. And if you add half a squeezed lemon to this water, you can strengthen your immune defenses and further improve your digestion. Hiroto described the habit of drinking water in the morning as an internal wash, a way to eliminate toxins accumulated during the night and awaken the organs. He told of a farmer who, every morning, drank a glass of warm water with a pinch of lemon, immediately feeling more energetic and ready to face the day. And he told of how Ayurvedic doctors, since ancient times, treated people in this way. This ritual stimulates metabolism, promoting weight loss. It promotes the elimination of toxins, improving the health of the skin and internal organs. Finally, it improves intestinal regularity, preventing constipation. Listen to your thirst. He continued his lesson. Thirst, Hirodo taught, is the voice of your body asking you what it needs. Don't ignore it, but don't overdo it. Find the balance. Make sure you drink the right amount of water for your personal situation. Hiroto told the story of a monk who, during a long meditation retreat, learned to distinguish true thirst from the simple desire to drink. He learned to listen to the subtle signals of his body, drinking only when it was truly necessary. The benefits of drinking this way are many. First of all, it prevents dehydration and overhydration, two conditions that can have negative consequences on health. Then it promotes listening to your body and connecting with its needs. Drink with meals, but in moderation, the monk continued. Water can help digest food, but too much water with meals can dilute the digested juices, causing them to not do their job well. Take small sips during meals and drink more abundantly between meals. Herodo compared the stomach to a mortar where food is pounded by gastric juices to be digested. Too much water, he said, is like adding too much water to a mortar. The pestle can't work well and digestion slows down. Drinking the right amount of water, he continued, aids digestion helping to break down food and move it through the digestive tract. It prevents bloating by keeping the stomach from overloading. It helps you feel full by keeping you from overeating. Another important thing you should do is drink before, during and after exercise. The body, Hiroto said, is like a battlefield during exercise. Water is your ally. It keeps you hydrated and gives you the energy you need. Hiroto told the story of a marathon runner who, during a race, became severely dehydrated, risking collapse. From that day on, he learned to drink regularly during training and races, improving his performance and protecting his health. Drinking during exercise prevents dehydration, which can cause fatigue, muscle cramps, and more serious problems. It improves physical performance by keeping the body hydrated and providing energy to the muscles. It promotes muscle recovery by helping to eliminate toxins produced during exercise. Add a pinch of salt to the water. Salt, Hiroto explained, is an essential mineral for the body. A pinch of salt in the water helps replenish the electrolytes lost through sweat. Hiroto described how, in the past, desert travelers would carry small amounts of salt with them to add to their water, thus preventing dehydration and cramps. He explained that salt helps maintain water balance in the body, promoting water absorption at the cellular level. This way, you replenish electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, and magnesium, essential for muscle, nerve and heart function and you prevent muscle cramps which can be caused by a lack of electrolytes the presence of salt also improves hydration 
helping the body to absorb and retain water more efficiently. As the pilgrims listened attentively to the monk's words, Hiroto told everyone that drinking water from copper cups brings enormous benefits to our bodies. Copper, he said, is a metal with antibacterial properties. Drinking from a copper cup can help purify the water and strengthen the immune system. Hiroto told the story of a village where the water was contaminated. A wise man advised the villagers to store the water in copper containers. After some time, the diseases decreased and the village prospered. Copper purifies water, eliminating bacteria and other harmful microorganisms. Strengthens the immune system. Thanks to the antioxidant properties of copper, improves digestion, stimulating the production of digestive enzymes. Another important thing you should do, my dears, is to bless the water before drinking it. Water, Hiroto taught, is a sacred gift of nature. Before drinking it, express gratitude and blessing. This simple gesture transforms the water into a source of positive energy. Hiroto told of a pilgrim who, during a journey, found himself without water. In despair, he knelt down and prayed. Shortly after, he found a spring of fresh, pure water. From that day on, he always blessed the water before drinking it, feeling a deep connection with nature and the divine. This increases awareness, transforming an everyday gesture into a moment of reflection and gratitude. It promotes gratitude, helping to recognize and appreciate the abundance of life. It creates a sacred ritual around the act of drinking, elevating it to a spiritual experience. Remember, among other things, to drink with intention. Every sip of water, Hiroto continued, can be an act of healing. Visualize the water flowing through your body, cleansing and regenerating it. Drink with the intention of nourishing not only your body, but also your mind and spirit. Hiroto spoke of an old martial arts master who, despite his advanced age, was still strong and agile. His secret? Drinking water with the intention of nourishing not only his muscles, but also his chi, his life energy. Drinking water with intention promotes the mind-body connection, creating a bridge between your awareness and your physical sensations. Increases awareness of the power of intention and visualization. Promotes holistic healing, involving body, mind, and spirit in the wellness process. The pilgrims were grateful to Hiroto for these precious Buddhist teachings. They had learned that even the simplest actions, if done with presence and intention, can lead to profound transformation. Water, from a simple drink, had become a symbol of life, healing and connection with the divine.